Hello, in this tutorial we are going to be looking at spawning and moving pipes. So at the moment we've just set up our pipe class and we've got a method for drawing the pipes. They will draw once we've actually implemented the methods for spawning them and in this video we'll also be implementing the methods for moving them as well and they'll be spawned off the screen to the right hand side and they will be moving to the left. So that is what we'll be covering in this video. First of all, as usual, go to the definition file and in here we just need one definition and this is going to be the pipe movement speed. So you can just modify this if you feel like the pipes are moving too fast or too slow. And I'm going to put 20.0f. At the moment, this seems like an arbitrary number, but this is a number that I've experimented with and I feel is a decent value. And you, it will become a bit more apparent how this is being used in a moment. So the next thing, once you've got the hash defined done, is go to your pipe.hpp. We want to create a few more public methods. We need methods for spawning the pipes. But we're going to have a method for spawning the bottom pipe, for spawning the top pipe. They will have slight differences. And we'll need something for spawning a, an invisible pipe. I had an issue when spawning the bottom and top pipe. And the issue was if I sp spawn the pipes like that, they would sort of skew when moving. But what I found was if I just spawned an extra pipe and just made it invisible, so that way you can't see it, it actually fixed that issue and the skewing only occurred with the invisible pipe. So this is just a way to get around a bug that I was having. That's what game development's about, getting around issues and solving them in any way possible. So the next thing, I'm gonna have a method for moving the pipes. So move pipes, and this is just gonna move every single pipe like so, and now, in the pipe.cpp, we're going to be implementing these methods. So if we copy and paste these into here, so just save us some time instead of typing all these out again. And last thing, we need to just put pipe colon colon. So put one here, one here, one here, and one there. So in the spawn bottom pipe, let's get that done first. The first thing that we need to do is create a sprite. So SF sprite, I'm gonna call it sprite. We're gonna initialize it with the asset of the, the pipe, which will be the pipe up, because even though it's gonna be the bottom pipe, it's the pipe that is facing up, AKA it is open from the top our data assets dot get texture and we're gonna put pipe up pipe up it's almost just like pipe up you and we're gonna do sprite dot set position so we just need to set the position now so let's just set the x value so the x value is going to be the data window dot get size dot x so we're just moving it the width of the screen to the left in the x axis so what this will provide us is with the with the pipe actually outside of the window so when it spawns it will move onto the screen and for the y position this is where some of the beauty lies so first of all we need to get the window dot get size dot y so this is the height of the window and we are gonna minus the sprite dot get global bounds dot height so we are setting it in the dot get size so this moves it all the way down, but that means it's off screen. So we just need to move it back onto the screen. So we're just doing sprite dot get global bounds like so. And last thing we need to do is pipe sprites dot push back. And the thing we're pushing back is sprite like so. 
copy and paste this for the top pipe. The only difference is we need to change the Z, I mean, the Y value, and this just becomes zero. That's it. We just want this to start at the top, and we need something for the invisible pipe as well. The position honestly doesn't matter what it is and it doesn't actually even matter what asset we're using this is going to be pipe down and for this we're pushing it back but before we do that we need to do sprite.setColor and this will just allow us to make it invisible so if we do sf color just apply zero to all of these and we won't actually see this like so and now we just need to implement the move pipes method so in here we need to loop over all of our pipes so we can literally just get this for loop from here Ooh, don't know what the hell's happened there that was weird and inside of here we need to create a vector 2f which is going to be the position so sf vector to f position equals pipe sprites dot at so at the current index of i dot get position like so we need to calculate the movement so float movement equals pipe underscore one pipe underscore movement speed and I believe, yet yeah, we have not done hash include definitions. So in pipe.cpp, we need to put the pipe movement speed. That's not all. We need to multiply it by dt, which is the delta time, aka the time difference between the previous and the current frame. And this allows us to create frame rate independent gameplay. So that way, if we have the game running at 45 frame per second it will run at a certain speed I mean it will move at a certain speed and if we have the game running at 90 frames per second aka twice the frame rate it won't move twice as fast even though there's twice the number of iterations occurring because this value will be lower on average so this just allows us to create frame independent gameplay and the last thing we need to do is pipe sprites dot at I Dot move and we're just moving it minus movement in the x-axis because the minus number moves it to the left in the horizontal direction and zero in the y-axis so that's it for the pipe class for this video we just need to go into the game state dot cpp and in update we need to do pipe move pipes at the moment this won't do anything because we're not spawning any pipes so for now what we're going to do is essentially get the code from the main menu state so this part here and this just will allow us to check if a particular sprite has been clicked the sprite we're going to check for is the background so if we click the background we're going to spawn pipes we wouldn't usually do this, but this is just for testing in this video. In a future video, we will actually cover creating the spawning automatically of the pipes. So the first pipe you want to spawn is the invisible pipe, which will just prevent any sort of dodgy movement. And after that, you can just do bottom pipe. And the other beauty of having the bottom and the top pipe separate is it allows you to do multiple bottom and top pipes if you want to and maybe you only want to do a bottom pipe and then do a top pipe then a bottom pipe then a top pipe or you can spawn them both at the same time so it looks like the conventional flappy bird so if we run this now hopefully we get no errors which we didn't at least not on compilation and this is just loaded the application the main menu click play and if I click 
a spawn so a pipe and they are moving so i'm just gonna obviously i've spawned a ridiculous amount of pipes now so yeah that is it if you see a bit of like distortion and it's just flickering a bit that's not the issue i was saying that it's just because i'm recording you won't have this issue and that's it for this video in future videos we will cover how to create random pipes i mean actually spawn them automatically how to vary the height of the pipes and all of that good stuff if you have any questions feel free to post them on my educational platform so nonlearning.co.uk also there will be a link to our github page which will provide all the source code from every video in this series and thank you for watching and i will see you next time